Have you ever played with stacking blocks? That game where we try to stack as many blocks as possible? But what if I told you that it's possible to stack infinite blocks until reaching heights beyond our imagination? In fact, physics tells us that there's no maximum height we can reach. Let me explain. When the tower becomes tall enough, centrifugal force comes into play, balancing gravitational force, which means that the weight of the tower becomes almost irrelevant. This theoretically allows us to stack blocks all the way to the moon, or even to other planets, creating a space bridge. Incredible, right? But unfortunately, it's not that simple. The material technology we have today isn't sufficient to build something that large. However, there are people dedicated to finding solutions to this problem. And have you ever stopped to think what would be the biggest construction that humanity could create currently? Stay tuned, because the answer is coming. But before that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to not miss any of our upcoming videos. Let's go! One of the world's largest environmental conferences, Eco92, took place in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro, in 1992. Among the topics discussed was the search for more sustainable and less consumerist models of development. It was then that Japan, one of the most advanced countries in this regard, presented an innovative project. After all, they had already been facing the problem of lack of space for population growth for some time. Overpopulation is a growing reality in many urban areas around the world, and that's why Toshio Ojima, a Japanese architect, educator, environmentalist, and urban scientist, came up with the idea of creating a new city designed specifically to accommodate up to 30 million people. That's right, you didn't hear it wrong. This futuristic megaproject could change the face of urban life as we know it. But what would this dream city be like? This idea, unlike several others, would be possible to construct with the necessary resources. The construction proposed by him was so large that it would surpass Mount Everest in height, being approximately 1,200 meters taller than the tallest mountain on Earth. This megastructure would have been named the Tokyo Tower of Babel, since its construction would be in the country's capital. The tower would be about 10,000 meters high, making it the largest thing ever imagined to be built by man, with 1,969 floors. Imagine a skyscraper that reaches heights never seen before, capable of withstanding winds, storms, and cyclones without falling. Doesn't that seem impossible? But that's precisely what the architect envisioned when designing a futuristic tower that could stand on its own, regardless of the force applied to it. And most surprisingly, it would be divided into six distinct parts, each with a specific function. Reaching 9,000 meters above sea level, as I mentioned before, that's higher than any mountain on Earth. At this height, the temperature drops dramatically to about minus 50 degrees Celsius, and the pressure is much lower than at sea level. But the tower was designed to overcome these challenges and provide maximum comfort and safety for its inhabitants. And that's not all. With such a grand project, it is estimated that the construction of this tower could take between 100 and 150 years and cost over $25 trillion in current values. But what would this tower divided into six parts be? In the first part, called Geo Territory, there would be parking lots, power generators, and part of the infrastructure that keeps everything standing. The second part would be the Human Territory, with residences, shops, supermarkets, and medical care to facilitate the population's needs. From 1,000 meters to 3,500 meters, there would be the cloud territory with larger shops, some industries, and hotels for tourists. From 3,500 meters to 6,000 meters, the sky territory would begin, where the administrative part of the structure, universities, and some research centers would be located. Finally, the Star Territory, which would be above 9,000 meters, would focus on a space research center and have solar panels that would power much of the energy used by the tower's inhabitants. The place would be completely self-sufficient with its own sources of food, water, and energy. 
the city would be powered by renewable energy sources such as wind and solar, and would have its own desalination plant to provide clean water. The most striking feature of this city, however, is its design. Each layer would be connected by a network of aerial bridges and elevators, creating a continuous and efficient transportation system. But first, let's take a look at the numbers. The GDP of Japan, one of the world's largest economies, is around $1 trillion. This means that it would take maintaining this level of production for 25 years to build a vertical city that housed the entire population of the country. It seems impossible, right? But what is behind this idea that makes it so interesting to so many people? The answer lies in something called population verticalization. Instead of occupying large horizontal spaces, the idea is to expand cities vertically. This way, it is possible to make better use of available space, minimizing environmental impacts and improving urban mobility. Just imagine, instead of spending hours in traffic, you could simply take an elevator to get to work or school. No congestion, no pollution, no stress. Sounds too good to be true, right? Unfortunately, the idea is still more of a proof of concept than a reality. But that doesn't mean we can't dream of a more sustainable and efficient future for our cities. Those who watch the movie Elysium might get excited about this idea. But will it be feasible? Well, the benefits of this project are numerous. By creating a new type of city specifically designed for high population density, we can reduce pressure on existing urban areas and create more sustainable living environments. It could also provide a new model of sustainable living that could be replicated in other parts of the world. Of course, there are many challenges that will need to be overcome to make this project a reality. The construction costs would be enormous, and there would be many logistical challenges involved in building such a large city. So what do you think of this idea? Let me know in the comments below. Are vertical cities the solution to the urban problems we face today? Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content on technology, innovation, and mega projects. See you next time.